Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Glossy Philosophy. My name is Jansen Vindman and today we are doing a smoky eye tutorial based on Diane Keaton's AARP cover, magazine cover from this year. I saw it a few months ago and I was so inspired. It's been in the back of my head. She's wearing plaid almost head to toe with her giant dog and she looks amazing and I just wanted to celebrate women 50 plus and the incredible revolution that's going on with women in general right now. So stay tuned. I've already washed my face and done my skincare, so let's neutralize the face. We are going to start with the NARS primer that is tinted. Split it on your ring fingers and going from the lash line all the way up to the brow. Making sure that that skin is neutralized, but also that the product is nice and thin. We want it to grip onto the eyeshadows. We don't want them to slip and slide. And sometimes when you're using a silicone base like this, if you put too much on, things just kind of end up slipping and sliding all over the place. So now we're gonna go in with the corrector from Bobbi Brown and neutralize anything underneath the eye. This is light to medium bisque. There are so many colors, I would highly recommend getting yourself into a store like Nordstrom to try them on from a professional that works at the counter. The best way to figure out your corrector is to take off your concealer and everything so that you can actually see the skin and they will stripe you with three different options and the one that really cuts that discoloration is the one that you wanna go with. Because we're doing a smoky eye, the focus is obviously on the eyes. So we are going to start by doing a little tight lining with Victoria Beckham's Satin Kajal Liner. And just little dashes right on that upper waterline. Before we get into the eyes, I want to make sure that my brows are done because I don't, I want them to be nice and balanced and I don't want it to go overboard. So I'm just going to pop in a little bit of the brow definer. Even though I don't have my complexion on, it will be totally fine because I don't put a lot of product up on my forehead and I use a pretty fluffy brush. So just really quickly filling in any gaps that are happening. As we get older, our eyebrows start to thin out. So it's a very youthful thing to have a fuller brow. And now we're gonna get into the meat of the smoky eye. So I'm gonna be using my Connect and Color palette from MAC. And because of the colors that I'm wearing, I'm gonna be focusing on a warmer smoky eye, but a more traditional one I feel like is on the cooler side. So we may just kind of play around a little bit, but first I'm going to start with wedge. I'm gonna start with my 203 and dip that into wedge because I want to put this all over my lid, but I also wanna to start to bring it up into my socket. And I'm just lightly patting that onto my lid. Right now what we're doing is we're just trying to define the eye. Just getting a good base down. I might even go in with my bronzer or mix that in too, just to give a little extra depth. Remember, it is okay to use your bronzer as an eyeshadow. It's a beautiful eyeshadow whichever bronzer you have. And it really does connect the face in a really lovely way because you're putting it in other parts of the face. I'm gonna go in with my 201. There's nothing on here. And I'm just gonna see if I can grab some of that that's on the lid and bring that up into the socket. So grabbing some of my bronzer, putting that right in the socket. But because my brush is so big and fluffy, it's going to go above the socket line. And as you can see, wedge and a bronzer play really, really nicely with one another.
And Lisa Eldridge calls them buffing motions when you do little circles. So we are just buffing out the bronzer. You can absolutely wipe down your brush if you feel like nothing is really happening. You just want this to be really, really soft. Always taking a step back and looking at a mirror that's a little bit farther away as well. Now we are going to start to build up that outer edge. So I'm going to go in with a 217 into uninterrupted, but I'm also going to mix in a little bit of my bronzer too, because uninterrupted is a powerful shade. And I'm going to start to build that up on the outer third, extending my eye and bringing it just above the socket. If you have green or hazel eyes, uninterrupted is a great color for you. Same thing on the other side. That's the thing about a smoky eye is that you just, you want to take your time. So you want to carve out an extra five minutes to get that smokiness right because you want it to be really soft. I'm going to go back in with my 201 and just make sure those edges are really, really soft. There's nothing on my brush. I'm just softening everything together and you can see that build up happening. I'm going to go in with the 207 into my darkest shade. and start to build up a little bit of color. Following the angles of my face, so kind of, this is what I'm following right here. So right on top of that cheekbone, I don't, I don't wanna go dip down, that'll be too far, but I'm following that line. I'm also following that line when I do a winged liner as well. Just placing that shadow. This is like a bigger pencil brush, knocking off any color that's on my 217 and then starting to work that in. This is the great thing about fall, right? Because all of a sudden we have all these plaids with really interesting color combinations that you get to play with in your makeup as well. It doesn't just work for accessories, grabbing the colors that are in your clothing. It also works for makeup. Just grabbing a little bit of that darker color on my 217 and bringing that up just on the tip, just barely touching the skin. There we go. And then I'm going to go back in with the 201. So it's a lot of back and forth, back and forth and make sure I don't want to get rid of that smokiness, but I just want to soften it a little bit. I can always go back in with my bronzer and just on the top of that line, add a little bit of softness, a little bit of buffing out, if you will. Okay. Now we're going to go back in with our Satin Kajal Liner and we are going to get our smoke. So getting right into the roots of the lashes. No gaps. And this is a pretty soft pencil. It gives you a little bit of time. So it doesn't have to be perfect because we are going pencil brush to be softening this line. Just by using a pencil brush and smoking at that line, it just makes it a little bit softer, a little bit more wearable. You can always go in with a darker brown. So now I'm going in with the cooler brown on my pencil brush and I'm just going over that. You almost are treating it like a gel. So you could absolutely do this with a gel because a gel has a little bit of movability 
but if we're going a little bit more classic, we're going to be using that black pencil. And of course you can play with color. It doesn't have to be brown and black. It can be charcoal and black, it can be blue, green, it can be any of these color combinations you need. A medium tone, a dark tone, and some kind of really dark pencil. So doing the same thing on the other side, just getting right into the roots of the lashes, and then going in with a pencil brush. And then I'm just lifting up my line at the end just a little bit for a very tiny kitten wing because that just suits my eye shape a little bit better than a straight stop at my eyelid. So stop at your eyelid first and then see if you feel like you need a little lift. Going in with that darker color again on my pencil brush and just softening that line even more, incorporating it into the look even more. Doing that double line will also give you a little bit more longevity. Sometimes these Kajal pencils can move around throughout the day, so that just gives you a little bit. And of course, you can decide if you want to add maybe just a little bit of a shimmer on that inner corner and just kind of perk it up a little bit. Before we do mascara and finish off the eyes, we're gonna choose a complexion very quickly because we spent a good portion on our eyes. And as you guys know, you have however long to do your makeup before life continues. So you can spend your time on your complexion or you can spend your time on your eyes, your lips. Find one thing to spend your time on and then just slam everything else on. That is my feeling, especially for day to day. If this was like for a photo shoot or family photos or something like that, we would spend just a little bit more time on everything, but you just have to have fast hands with everything else when you're doing something that's a little bit more complex. So that was the Giorgio Armani Luminous Skin going in with Lisa Eldridge's Seamless Foundation in number nine, using bouncing motions with my brush. And I'm placing it anywhere where there's more discoloration on the face than in others. You can tell that the, I'm not sick, but my nose is red from some more intensive skincare treatments that I did this morning. So sometimes that can get the blood flowing in different ways and I just want to make sure that that gets covered up because you don't want a red eye you don't want a red nose with a smoky eye. Ah, everything's feeling a little bit better. So now I'm just going back in with my brush and anywhere where I feel like I want a little bit more coverage, that's where I'm going. Bring it down the neck just a smidge. Now we're going to go in with our Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder on our blush and powder brush. And I'm not being too delicate about this. Just putting it through the center of my face. Anywhere where I feel like there's a little bit of shine. I am on the drier side so I don't really need to powder my cheek area because it's going to get enough powder anyways from my blush which is sweet enough and my bronzer, which I'm definitely going to put on just to connect everything together. So the KB bronzer brush in Natasha Denona. Just doing a quick contour bronze. So under that cheekbone and just going really quickly under the cheekbone, onto the cheekbone. Under the cheekbone, onto the cheekbone. And just a little bit along the hairline. Again, just so that the focus is really through the center of the face. I'm darkening the outer parts of my face so that the middle really pops, which is great for the smoky eye. Okay. There's nothing extra on my brush, but sometimes it's nice to just connect everything. Okay, 
Let's go back to the eyes very quickly. So I'm going to use my smoky quartz and my lower lash line. You could do black, but this is the morning. And some of my black has already moved down anyways. But I like the smoky quartz for daytime and also for photos. I think it's just really beautiful. Just gives a little bit of an extra kick. I'm going to grab one of my 217s. I'm going to go in with the bronzer. I'm going to give myself a little bit of powder under there just to connect the eyes. Again, if this was later in the day, I would definitely go in with an uninterrupted, maybe even a little bit of that darker shadow as well. but I do want this to be softer. So your bronzer is a really great way to kind of get you on the right footing for a smoky eye that can transition into nighttime. We are going in with 3D Maximizer by Dior. Getting right into the roots and wiggling while we pull up and then kind of going back in and making sure that all the lashes have been coated. Dipping back in, and then going in with Smoky Eye Mascara. I mean, it's perfect, right? Perfect for a smoky eye. Once again, getting right into the roots. Your mascara can kind of catch any mistakes you made with your liner. So if you didn't quite get all the gaps, a good mascara can kind of fill those out for you. So I think we should definitely add a little bit of a highlight on our cheekbones and definitely some gloss, but you guys knew that was coming anyways. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of that highlighter from Lisa Eldridge. I'm going to split it again on my middle finger and just tap it on that bone. And then go in with my dual fiber. And just really gently tap. I don't want the whole face to be matte. So if you're doing a really matte eye, it's kind of nice to have a little bit of a glow in other places. I'm going to go in with Kitten Mischief. And Muse. Like your top teeth? Pinky through? And we're done. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial on the Diane Keaton look from the AARP magazine. I love that women 50 plus are having this revolution in fashion and beauty and just being recognized for the amazing people that they are and also their beautiful spirit and just the beauty that's going on with them on the outside as well. So I do fashion videos every Wednesday, beauty videos every Friday. Make sure you are following me on Instagram and watching the shorts on YouTube for some really fun quick tips and tricks and fun videos as well. So hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.